Wait, you want to be the star of the show? You come eat. You just wanted to share your stinky breath with me? So today we're talking all about our internet setup. Yep. That's probably, it's definitely the number one question we get asked when we're walking around the park or talking to somebody about living full time in our RV and the fact that I still work full time and um, telecommute from wherever we happen to be. How do you do that? Well, you know, the computer's great. It's, uh, it's godlike in a way. You know, what? It definitely is the thing that we get asked most often. Well, I, maybe second to, what kind of dog is that? That's true. Because Everybody wants to know about yeah. that. Yeah, the second, the second he mentions that he still works, that's the question. Yeah. So we thought, what better way to answer that than to just put a video out there? Because if we're getting asked that question all the time, then I'm assuming that there are a lot of people out there like you mm -hmm. that want to know. Please help us, our house, it has no internet. And that was obviously the question that I had before we went full time. Uh, so I did a lot of research because we couldn't do this without me being able to access the, uh, good, reliable uh, internet full-time. When I get asked this question online, I always preface it with that's a loaded question that has a million answers. And that's absolutely true. Uh, as far as getting online, getting on the internet, uh, there are a million ways to do it. I'm gonna cover how we do it. Uh, now, I'm gonna cover a little bit about how we plan to do it in the future with some expansion. Uh, and maybe just talk a little bit about how you know different ways of doing it um yeah, yeah. And, and our way doesn't necessarily mean it's the best way for you but it's working for us it's it's working for us all i know is that i can watch tv and get on the internet <laughs> so along with um the questions about internet access a lot of times comes the question of entertainment how do you watch tv do you have satellite and the answer for our entertainment is the same as the answer for the internet. Um, we stream everything. Yeah. Luckily, uh, and I'm going to go over this when I talk about the details, we have uh, unlimited data on all of our plans, both of our plans for Verizon and for uh, AT&T. That could change at any minute. You know, you never know when they're going to change their plans or cut off your grandfathered access or whatever. But for now, we're good and we stream everything. We have um, Apple TV out here and in the bedroom, uh, and of course we can plug in, plug it in, in the garage or outside if we need to. We stream everything. We, uh, because of our plan with AT&T, we have DirecTV now for like 10 bucks a month. Uh, that gives us a provider login so that we can use all of the apps. Netflix, Hulu. Yeah. Um, which Amazon those have, which, Prime yeah. Video, wait, Prime Video. Yeah. And those all have their own logins, uh, so those, uh, but like whenever we want to use, say, Bravo. CBS or ABC apps, things like that. They always want you to log in using your provider, mm -hmm. and 99% uh, of them now accept DirecTV now uh, as a valid service provider so that you can get authorized to watch their shows. Granted, a lot of them still have commercials, but you know, hey, we're, uh, we're traveling full time in an RV. We're not going to have the perfect situation. We do, however, have the um, Direct TV now does have the cloud DVR that they're beta testing. Uh, so that works out kind of good too. It's like having a DVR you have at home, uh, except it's all in the cloud and we can watch them just like we watch anything else. It went up to the cloud! And you can't get it down from the cloud? Nobody understands the cloud. Feel free to. Um... Uh, you know, ask questions in the comments if you're if you're unsure of something, or communicate with us. And by yeah, us, I mean with him, because I have no idea. <laughs> communicate with us on Facebook or below in the comment section, and we'll try to answer your questions. Okay. Connecting to the internet. The problem is, of course, how do you get things in your RV to connect to the internet? Um, the solution of connecting things inside the RV is pretty easy. It's just like your house; you have a router. So. You've got a router here, and then you've got TVs, iPads, uh, you know, phones, iPhone, etc. Of course, can all connect over Wi-Fi to your router. Uh, of course, the router can also support uh, hardwired connection, which we do sometimes because we also have a network attached storage we use for all of our 
uh, videos and source content and all stuff like that. But the big thing is the router. The big difference between a router in your house and a router in an RV is mobile capabilities. So you want to get a mobile router. And the difference being your, your modem at home or your router at home is designed to connect to a, you know, out to a hardwired, out to the internet through your cable provider or, you know, Fios or fiber or whatever, what have you. And of course, everything inside connects to the router and that router acts as a gateway between your house and the internet. Don't have that obviously with an RV traveling full time. So the big difference between a regular router and a mobile router is a mobile router can connect to cellular connections. And that looks like crap. <laughs> a mobile router can connect to cellular connections, uh, upstream Wi-Fi connections, or what, what have you to get to the internet. We have what's called a Wi-Fi Ranger Go AC, and I'll link that up here, wherever it is. And it is pretty good at uh, letting you tether directly to a modem. So let's just say we have a um, hotspot here for AT&T. We have a hotspot for Verizon. Uh, you might also have campground Wi-Fi. That's supposed to be a Wi-Fi. These things thing. are not to scale. <laughs> just so you know. So what you can do is obviously these mo these modems are all designed to connect to the internet. They're already out there. So you can connect your Wi-Fi Ranger or other capable internet router directly to these. This of course is a wireless connection if you've got a uh, campground Wi-Fi and you can swap them at, in and out depending on your location, depending on which signal's better, uh, depending on what's available. The nice thing is everything inside here, your iPads, your iPhones, your Apple TVs, uh, your computers, everything stays connected to this guy. This guy never changes. He's got his own internal Wi-Fi, so you have your uh, Wi-Fi signal that's always available in your rig and those never have to change. We don't have to go changing our uh, Apple TV every time we change from AT&T to Verizon or what have you. I can select it here and select upstream and everything just works. Another feature of a good mobile router is the ability to do some failover. So for instance, right now what I'm gonna show you is we're in a campground that has decent Wi-Fi. Doesn't happen very often, uh, but, we're yeah. we have, <laughs> but we happen to be in one right now. So I'm connected right now to the campground Wi-Fi with a failover to AT&T. AT&T has a decent connection here. Verizon, meh, no connection here. Uh, but it's different in every location. So part of the uh, little bit of a dance we have to do when we get to a new location is I have to plug in AT&T and see how it works. I have to plug in Verizon and see how it works. Shall we play a game? Oh. And you, you always want to do a speed check, not just look at the number of bars, because number of bars means nothing. Um, you could have, you know, five bars on AT&T, but if that AT&T tower has a, a bad backhaul, which means its internet connection is saturated or bad, uh, then it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, if, if there's some tower out here and it's got a little DSL modem connected to the internet, it's crap. Um, that never really happens, but just as an example. So there's a lot of variables here. And like I said, what I'm going to show you is our connection our, or our setup. It is our initial got us going setup. It's not perfect. I do plan on expanding it in the future and I'll talk about that. Well, let's go take a look at uh, how we've got this set up. Let's take a little look here. This is the Wi-Fi Ranger Go AC. It's a pretty small, pretty simple device. Uh, you can see it's got some Ethernet connections on the back here. Um, those are just normal Ethernet connections for what we're hardwired into our NAS and stuff, but that's out of the scope of this. Uh, and the big thing here is this right here. Ooh. This has a USB connection that runs. I've got a little bit longer cable than I need right now, so when we have to move stuff around, that is currently running over here to this guy. 
AT&T. This is the Unite Explorer. And this is, I think, like a little soap holder or something. Yeah. <laughs> that I picked up to hold it. And this is a MIMO antenna. A lot of people out there have signal boosters for their cellular. And those are great if you've got a bad cell signal to boost the signal to get it so that your device like this or like this, this is Verizon, uh, can pick that up. The downside to that is cellular boosters boost one channel and your phone, these devices are designed to use two channels. It's called MIMO, multiple in, multiple out. And what that does, it's kind of like if you think about um, if you've got a two lane highway versus a one lane highway. Uh, it allows the modem to send and receive and talk on two different channels at once, uh, which can double your actual throughput. Now, these devices support that natively, but to improve the signal, we've got this. This is a Netgear MIMO antenna. Uh, you can get this guy on Amazon, and it's a real simple little connection here. Plugs in down here, uh, has the same two connectors on this Verizon hotspot. Uh, not all hotspots have these connectors. These are called TS9s. So if you get a hotspot, uh, you want to try to make sure it will support a, an external antenna. So what that does is it gives you a much bigger profile up here to talk to the tower. So basically what we've got here is the Wi-Fi Ranger. That's our internal hub for everything. We, everything connects to that over Wi-Fi or wired. And then it connects over the USB to this. And then this uses the antenna out to the world, out to the internet. So basically every time we get to a new spot, it's a matter of connecting up the antenna to each one of these devices and then testing and seeing which one has the best throughput. Everything. Uh, and like I say, it's important to do a speed test. Don't just look at bars because bars don't tell the whole story. So after I determine which of these is going to work, uh, if both of them are fairly equal, I'll use whichever one I've used the least data on for that period, just so I kind of, you know, don't overuse one versus the other. So I wanted to go over a little bit of this interface with you, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of how it's set up. Uh, I also want to stop to kind of talk about, you know, this setup is probably a little bit more for tech savvy people. Um, if you aren't into figuring out how to connect one, one Wi-Fi to another Wi-Fi or uh, your uh, mobile router to um, hardwired tethered to a Wi-Fi or you know figuring out how to connect A to B to C your best bet might be just to pick up a hotspot like this honestly the most difficult part of getting an internet set up that you can travel with and be connected full-time is the data plan um, unfortunately that's changing constantly and there's just not a whole lot you can do about that other than trying to jump on uh, what's available and out there. I am on an old, old grandfathered unlimited data plan. It goes back to kind of before um, data was a real issue. Uh, and so they still had unlimited data because nobody used it. My AT&T plan, uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, I did get from AT&T, but they don't offer that plan anymore. Well, hold on. Are you trying to tell me that the stuff you just talked about they can't get anymore? Well, the answer to that is complicated. Yes and no. You can't get the same plans we have right now because they just don't exist anymore. Plans are constantly changing, but you can still get unlimited data plans. They're not quite as flexible as they were, but everything is a pendulum. It's always swinging back and forth. One of the two big players will start offering really unlimited data plans, and then the other one will go, oh crap, we've got to do that too. Right now, it's June 24th, 2018. That's weird, 2018. Uh, and these are the current plans. And I know from insider talk that I get through mobile internet aficionados, which I highly recommend, that even AT&T's plans are in the works of changing and so are Verizon's. So currently, they both offer unlimited data plans. Those unlimited data plans refer to data plans on your phone. Now you can take a phone and set it up as a hotspot 
and tether it directly to the Wi-Fi Ranger or over Wi-Fi to the Wi-Fi Ranger. Both carriers pretty much offer that. The trick comes when you actually turn your phone into a hotspot. Uh, and tether it like I just talked about. Some of the plans do allow that, some of them don't. So when you're picking out a plan, be sure you ask specifically about hotspot use on your phone. Now the other side of the coin is hotspot use on a dedicated mobile device like a jetpack. That you have to ask them about also. Some of the plans do allow it and some of them do not. All the plans do cap you at certain data usage. And then at that point, either throttle you through network management or just straight up throttle you to like 600 kbps. So from a work standpoint, that's still usable. I could still on a throttled plan or a plan with limited um, data, like the 22 gigs, I think on 18 and it might be 15 on Verizon. Uh, I could still work with that we would probably have to change up how we do entertainment because we use a lot of data streaming. Uh, but again, next month it could be completely different. They may have unlimited plans. A lot of times you have these uh, smaller companies like T-Mobile or Sprint. They sometimes offer really good data plans too to compete with the big players like AT&T and Verizon. So you just have to play the game. So look, staying on top of this is difficult. Uh, luckily, coming up in the video, I'm going to talk about some resources that you can use that I used uh, when setting this up and I still use every day just about keeping on top of the stuff. So not to fear, data is here. <laughs> <laughs> and if at some point they shut us off on one and or the other. Uh, then we'll probably get a satellite and look at other data methods and try to scale back our usage of our, our streaming and things of that across our cellular connections. So I want to go into a little bit here and just show you a little bit of the Wi-Fi Ranger interface. Now again, this is just for us. There are lots, when I say lots, there's, there's a handful of mobile routers out there. This is a real popular one because it does uh, have a lot of uh, built-in support for um, putting a Wi-Fi extender antenna on your roof. Uh, we don't have that because I use it just like it is. Uh, I plan on some point putting an antenna on the roof, but that'll be a whole other story. So if we look in here in the control panel interface for this, you can see that right now in this main page here, uh, I am online using Wi-Fi at two gigahertz, and I also have a cellular connection tethered here to my AirCard 815S, the hotspot that I've got on the window up there, and it's in hot standby. So I can configure this a couple of different ways. First of all, in my main interface here, I can see all of the available Wi-Fi connections. So um, right now we're staying at Great Outdoors RV Resort in Franklin, North Carolina, uh, in the Smoky Mountains. And I can see they have a, a couple of different repeaters that I can see from our location uh, on different channels, but it also gives me the signal strength. So I have a couple of choices there. I picked one, speed tested it, and I just connected to it. And what I've got here in the setup screen is you can set up your different types of connections and set them in priority. And you can say whether you want them to be a failover connection you can say whether you want them to be, uh, which is a hot standby. I can also load balance them and try to use both of them. Um, or I can say dynamically uh, allocate them and um, use switch over to one if the bandwidth on one goes behind, below a certain threshold. But it's pretty straightforward. I usually set it for hot standby. If the Wi-Fi goes away, it'll switch over to our um, cellular connection. I don't use Wi-Fi a whole lot. Half of the time I don't even test it because the cellular connection will be really really strong. It just so happens that in the location we're in now, uh, in the mountains, the cell signal isn't great. So I do have to, uh, you know, I'm getting about the same download speed on the cellular as I am on the Wi-Fi, so why not use the Wi-Fi? Uh, also, we've had a lot of weather lately and the cellular has been kind of cutting in and out, so. Anyway, that's just a quick overview. This uh, this thing is ultimately configurable uh, in a number of different uh, ways and has a lot of options, but the biggest thing is 
it can connect to my hotspots over USB or Wi-Fi and it's pretty versatile. So the other thing I should mention is these are obviously hotspots by themselves. I mentioned if you're you know, not tech savvy, you don't want to deal with all this, you might just want to pick up one of these guys and you know connect right to it and then change your devices over if you have multiple. When we are picking a site that we're going to camp, obviously we full time so we go from place to place to place. So as we're looking and at what we're gonna book, um, I check RV Trip Wizard is a really good resource. It's also great for building and planning out your, your actual path, where you're gonna park, that kind of stuff. It also has built-in reviews for RV park reviews. So between Campendium and RV park reviews, a lot of times on there, there'll be specific people, people saying specifically, uh, AT&T has a great signal, Verizon has a great signal, or don't have any signal or whatever. So that's the first place we check. I also will use coverage, uh, coverage with a question mark app uh, in the app store to see if uh, it has the maps for AT&T and Verizon. I can lay them over the top of each other. And if I am near the edge of one of the connected areas, I generally will say, nah, not gonna do it. So not having internet is not an option for us. So when we're setting up camp at a new spot, it's a little bit of a dance. Um, the first thing I do is I test that antenna with both devices in that window. If I get a good signal on one of them, I just go with it. If I don't, I try both devices in various locations in the rig, pointing different directions, because that is a directional antenna. And if I get a really good signal in one of the other windows, then I will leave it there and I will connect to these over Wi-Fi instead of over USB. It's not an ideal situation, but it allows me to keep my setup here uh, keep my router here, keep it close to the NAS because I'm hardwired to it. It lets me keep my office stuff here and then just put this wherever. So I want to give a, a definite plug and shout out to Mobile Internet Resource Center. Chris and Cherie have been full timing for like, you know, 100 years or something. And uh, they have switched from full time RVing to full time boating and they switch back and forth. But they put together this resource and it is absolutely fantastic. When I was researching this before we, uh, before we even purchased RV, obviously I need to, needed to make sure that this was even possible to do full time on the road. Uh, Mobile Internet Resource Center is awesome. Uh, if, you, if there is a device that is used to connect to the internet in any mobile fashion, they've got a review on it, they have tons of information, they do tons of testing, and I do recommend you pay for their premium subscription. I'm not getting paid by them. Uh, I'm in no way affiliated with them. I used the free resources for a while, but when it was time to really get serious and do some serious research, you know, they put a lot of time and effort into testing all of this gear and putting together just tons of information. And it's definitely worth, I can't remember how much it was. It was maybe 40 bucks for a year or something. Uh, it wasn't a lot. And if you decide you're going to purchase a Wi-Fi Ranger, they have discounts uh, that'll pay for your membership right out of the gate. If you're what's called a mobile internet aficionado, that's their, that's their paid premium subscription, is you get access to their Facebook group and you also get first notification on anything that's changing. The biggest battle right now is finding a good plan. So that is basically it in a nutshell. Help, I'm in a nutshell. How did I get into this nutshell? Uh, like I said, it's not an easy topic. It's just there's, there's a thousand answers to how to get on the internet. This is how we do it. It was working well for us. So that basically wraps up how we connect to the internet on the road. It's working well for us so far. If you like this video, we do videos like this. We also do motorcycle ride videos as well as location videos wherever we happen to be staying. Uh, so if you like this and you like our channel, please subscribe. Please click the like button. If you want to, click the little bell down below and that way you get notified whenever we have a new video out or if we happen to go live on YouTube, you'll get notified when we go live. So, hope you enjoyed it. 